Many people think of America as a nation without any real culture. However, the history of engineering masterpieces and innovative entrepreneurism tells a completely different story. And what else could better depict American culture than a big, roaring V8 engine? The small block Chevy is nothing less than a true American icon. Its creation and design symbolize why this country is so great. A large, simple, and nearly bulletproof piece of machinery that depicts how much potential American engineers can create. For 50 years, this iconic engine was produced for a multitude of purposes, and to this day, crate engines are still being produced by GM, telling us this is a true example of American engineering. The small block Chevy is a family of cast iron block pushrod V8 engines with the same basic block design, ranging from 262 cubic inches to 400 cubic inches. The engine has a wide array of uses, mainly focused in pickup trucks, muscle cars, and large sedans. And some are even used as marine engines or industrially as generators. But how did such a simple, primitive engine become this successful? Well, until the mid 50s, Chevy only used inline sixes in all their automobiles. With the rising popularity of the V8 caused mostly by Ford's flathead V8, other competitors were releasing their own engines with the same configuration, including Cadillac, Oldsmobile, and Chrysler. By 1951, everyone had their own special V8 except for Chevy. Chevy's only V8 was produced way back in the 1910s. It was way too old to reproduce now. With the new popularity, Chevy's new goal was to design a powerful, small, efficient V8 that can compete with everything else in the market, and they would release this in the 1955 Corvette. Ed Cole was the lead engineer that would design Chevy's new engine. Hired in 1952, his main goal was to create a cheap, lightweight engine that could perform better than Ford's flathead V8. To create better efficiency, he borrowed Pontiac's V8 valve train designed by Clayton Leach. The stud-mounted, independent ball rocker arm design included hydraulic lifters to actuate pushrods to open overhead valves, creating a breathable environment much more efficient than Ford's flathead design. The new engine, a 265CI variant that was named the Turbofire, produced 162 horsepower stock with a standard two-barrel carb. The engine was available for the 55 Chevy Bel Air and was upgraded with a four barrel carburetor and a less restrictive exhaust for the 1955 Corvette. Overall, the new engine was a resounding success, especially among racers because of its very small, lightweight architecture and its very high power. It was an easy engine to work on and many people liked it because of it. It eventually became the base engine for all of GM's vehicles. With the success of this engine, Ed Cole eventually went up the corporate ladder, becoming GM's general manager in 1956 and eventually the company's president in 1967. Throughout the early years, the small block Chevy underwent a few alterations and different variations, retaining the same basic architecture and design. These included bored out turbo fires that increased the original displacement to 283 cubic inches and were very famous for creating one horsepower per square inch. However, it wasn't until 1962 when they created their most profitable variant. The family of the 4-inch bore was released with a 327 cubic inch engine in 1962, and the family was originally meant for racing purposes with the new regulations that had to be accounted for. These powerful engines became extremely popular throughout racing and eventually the consumer market, and a 302 cubic inch engine was finally released throughout the whole Chevy lineup in 1969. The 350 was by far the most popular small block Chevy ever made, however, and was produced from 1967 in the Camaro to 2002. Small block Chevy went through many changes throughout its life to remain successful. The global switch from carburation to fuel injection was a very big deal in the 1980s. This was accounted for with GM's throttle body injection or TBI, which efficiently replaced the carburetor with a set of 
two very crude fuel injectors on top of the same exact intake. This type of adaptation that changed only the parts that were needed contributed no small part at all to the engine's overall success. By the end of its practical time in 2002, the engine found itself in many applications, including cars, trucks, vans, and even Isuzu box trucks. Even the Wiener Mobile used a small block Chevy. The engine's combination of reliability, efficiency, and usable power were the largest parts of its success. Parts were widely available, and since the many variants were made under the same dimensions, engines could easily be modified to suit any purpose, whether it's for hot rodding, fuel efficiency, or even high weight pulling. While it was replaced in the early 2000s by port injected LS and Vortec engines, they still share the same basic design that the small blocks do. Small blocks are still being widely used today because of their simplicity, low costs, and ease to make big power. The small block Chevy revolutionized the auto industry and will always be remembered as an amazing piece of American culture.